G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags and welcome to patch 1.73. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the new French aircraft of the new French tree that was introduced to this patch and we'll be starting off today with the rank 2 battle rating 2.3 Arsenal de l'Aeronautique VG33C1. So, going over the basic in-game stats, we're armed with a 20mm Espano 404 cannon with 60 rounds of ammunition, we're armed with four 7.5mm Mac 1934 machine guns with 2,000 rounds of ammunition between them, top speed maxes out at 558km per hour in level flight and an altitude of 14,760 feet, turn time is around 19.2 seconds with a 2,573 feet a minute range of climb. So that's the War Thunder stack card out of the way, and I've just picked up my first target here. We have a BF-109, and he is slowly banking into my direction. So he's probably going to go for a head-on, because, well, this is, as I said, a battle rating 2.3 aircraft, and everybody tends to head-on. So up and over the top, roll it over, force him underneath, and then we check six. He goes vertical, killing his energy to get onto our six, and I'm not actually going to turn back on him. Well, not yet anyway. We have an NC-223-3. That is a French Battle Rating 2 bomber that's getting harassed by this 109. So we're going to get rid of this one first, and then we're going to turn back on the original 109 and deal with it. And put that Espano to work. First kill. And at this point, we want to open up a little bit of a gap. Although the 109 on our 6 does appear to be closing in. So anyway, at this point, the bomber is safe. And I don't really want to give up the altitude that I've already gained. I've got in a good position right here. If I can take out that 109 that's on my 6, I'll be able to lord this altitude advantage over all other aircraft that I could potentially encounter during this match. So as the 109's closing in, we're going to put the aircraft into a sharp turn and cut in underneath. The 109 is actually more maneuverable than the 33C1, but not by a huge amount. With the right amount of throttle control here, I should be able to get only 6. So straight into a scissors. Cut back across again. Just pumping the throttles up and down as is necessary. Power in through the turns. Now at this point, he's going to drop in on six. Cut back over. And reverse straight away. Now trying to roll out here and keep myself out of his guns, watching him closely. He manages to get a slight clip on me there, but nothing critical. And at this point, he backs out allows me to turn back out, nice crossover, back into the scissors, back to 100% power, building up speed, we're going to cross over nicely here, and an ally engages, short burst causes the 109 to bug out, which gives me just enough room to complete the turn back, 109 is continuing its turn to move to engage, but I'm going to get guns around first, 109 sees that, tries to dip in underneath, short burst through, we get a hit, but nothing critical, very similar to what the 109 managed to get on me just a few moments before, but I managed to complete the turn and drop in on the 109's rear. 109 knows he's in trouble now. Attempts to perform the same rolling maneuvers that I was doing before. Anticipate the lead, another hit, and remove the wing. Aircraft eliminated. So as you can see, the VG33C1 is not bad in a turning engagement. In terms of how the aircraft flies, it's really a jack-of-all-trades master of none. It turns reasonably well, it's reasonably fast for its battle rating, it dives reasonably well, it climbs reasonably well, it has a well, pretty comparable firepower to a lot of aircraft that you find at its battle rating, but it doesn't excel in any one area. This isn't actually a disadvantage for the aircraft though, especially at this battle rating, because what it means is this aircraft is capable of changing from boom and zoom tactics to turn fighting tactics with a skilled pilot who understands how the aircraft operates very, very fluidly. It also means if engaged by an aircraft that excels in one particular area, it's able to switch to an opposing style in order to form a bit of a counter to that aircraft. So if an aircraft is boom and zooming at a high rate, something that is exceptionally good at that particular tactic, it's able to comfortably switch into a more maneuvering role in order to keep itself out of the guns of that aircraft until such time as an opportunity presents itself for it to reverse the role and become the attacker itself. The energy retention of the 33C1 is high enough to be able to sustain this kind of combat, however it is worth noting that sharp maneuvers at high speeds will bleed energy extremely quickly. 
On the other side of things, however, once you drop down to lower speeds, around sub 300 kilometers an hour, the aircraft holds that energy extremely well. This can actually be a slight problem when approaching for landing, as the aircraft simply doesn't want to slow down, and will occasionally require some pretty aggressive maneuvers at low speeds at low altitudes in order to set the aircraft up for landing. So a little bit of information about the Arsenal VG33C1. The VG33C1 was actually first flown in 1939 and was introduced to the French Air Force in 1940. In the build-up prior to the invasion of Germany, France was not unaware of what could potentially be coming. And as such, Arsenal, the national military aircraft manufacturer for France, was tasked with building a number of light fighter aircraft. These aircraft had some basic construction requirements. Firstly, they needed to be built out of commonly available, easily accessible, and not always required materials, so the base construction for almost all of the aircraft was wood. The construction and design of the aircraft needed to be simple enough that the aircraft could be built in large numbers in a relatively short period of time, and finally the performance requirements of the aircraft were to be a comparable match to Germany's BF-109. And speaking of 109s, we have a target coming in. We have a BF 109E4. Once again, we have a comfortable energy advantage on the target. We have the altitude. We're just going to wait to see exactly what the 109 does at this point. Passing straight below us, and we are high enough. We've just lost visual on it. Not a major issue. I can still track it via its dot. Just passing over the water, heading towards the island. There it is. We've got the red box back up. And this time we're going to go and boom and zoom the hell out of this poor bastard. So throttles to zero, I actually don't need to build up too much speed here. In fact, having too much speed means I'm not going to be able to manoeuvre when I actually hit the target. He goes vertical, sees me coming, pick the lead and unfortunately miss. Take the aircraft straight back into the vertical. Complete the loop. And position to dive back in. Now I'm going to keep the weapon during the second pass to build up as much speed as I can. Solid hit. And I was concerned the 109 might try and loop straight back over and hit the top of the cockpit. So take it wide and into the vertical. Loop over with lots of range, lots of spare space. And dive back in. Once again, 109 comes back towards. Burst ahead. Critical hit on the target this time. Trying to go nose to nose with somebody way in the vertical is a terrible, terrible terrible mistake. All the advantage is on one side. And rather than turning back to immediately re-engage at this point, I wanted to open up a little bit of distance just to see exactly what the 109 is doing. With a critical hit and this aircraft wound up on energy with an advantage, there's no risk of him actually managing to escape. I just wanted to see exactly what condition he was in and exactly what he was going to do next. But at this point, time to start reeling him back in for another hit quick check of the six seat just to make sure there was no other aircraft around, I don't want to get jumped, nothing on radar at this point, and slowly reeling him into the kill zone. Unfortunately I probably shouldn't have backed off as much as I did because he is now under fire, a second aircraft has jumped in to try and get their, uh, to sink their teeth into the kill as well, and unfortunately at this point I am at a cannon round, so I'm down to just 7.5mm machine guns, a couple of hits there, there's another burst of machine gun fire coming through, Loop the aircraft over, dive back in, and I was shooting a little while before, so this time take better aim, and straight into the fuel tanks, light the 109 on fire, and then at this point just put a few extra rounds in just to make sure he disintegrates, and there is my third kill. Three 109s eliminated at this point, unfortunately being you know, slightly damaged, leaking a little bit of material here, and obviously out of cannon ammunition. Time to go back to that runway that we've now captured, pick up a repair and some fuel, and get back into this fight. So anyways, as I was saying, the VG-33 had been approved for construction just prior to the invasion of France by Germany and the fall of France, and had actually had a number of aircraft produced. The initial order was for 220, although that was increased in the last days before the fall to 1,000. However, only 170 airframes were ever completed, and most of them were still sitting in the factory at the time that they were captured, waiting for engines to arrive. Unfortunately, the engine choice was what let the VG-33 down in terms of production. 
The Espano Suzia 12Y engine was the most powerful liquid-cooled piston engine available in France at the time, which of course made it the ideal engine for all of France's fighters. The problem was there just wasn't enough of them, and between the prototypes that were under construction, the newly developed VG33s that were awaiting engines, and the production of the D520, which also used exactly the same engine, there just wasn't enough to go around. In the end, a great deal of France's developed aircraft that were intended for the defence of France against a potential German invasion were captured by Germany sitting in the factories with no engines, but otherwise complete. And so we come to the end of the match. Now it took us about 10 minutes to find the final guy on the enemy team. He was flying a HE 111. To be fair, he wasn't trying to hide. He was using the cloud cover to get back to his base and had just landed, got himself a reload and was in the process of trying to sneak back out to get back to our bombing targets at the time he was detected. So good play to him for not trying to drag out the match and just continuing to play the objective up until the moment that he no longer could. Unfortunately for him, the second a couple of fighters find you and you're in a bomber, last man standing on your team, it tends to only ever end one way. So that was the end of this match, so let's go through to the results. So we came in in first place for the team with three kills and one assist, 2,642 points in total. Awards for the match were Terror of the Sky, Bulletproof and On Hand. 35,760 Silver Lions with 4,952 Vehicle Research Points and 3,488 Modifications Research. Total match time was 20 minutes and 1 second and the aircraft was pretty much spaded at the time of this battle. I just had the fuselage to go back and unlock so I normally skip that earlier on and the rest of the research went into the MB-162 research. So, my final opinions on the aircraft. Um, in all honesty, this was the first plane that I found in the French tree that I actually sort of liked. Everything before this has been... Well, there was nothing that was horrible, but no aircraft that really grabbed me. At least not in the way that a lot of the lower tier stuff in other nations has. However, the VG33C1, it reminds me a lot of the MC202 for various reasons. It's not as good an aircraft as the 202, but there are definitely some similarities in terms of performance, and it is a hell of a lot of fun to fly. Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. As always, if you would like to help support the channel, links to my Patreon are down below. Also, links to my Twitch if anybody would like to come and watch me stream. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I will catch you in the skies.